Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I want to, to look at the first four verses. First four verses in Romans chapter 6 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Knowing ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like uh, that, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I want to talk about the term that was used there by Paul, that we are buried with Christ. But I want to talk about buried with Christ, yet alive. We are buried with Christ, and yet you and I are alive. How can we be buried? How can that we die, he talks about that, that, uh, that, that we are dead, dead to sin. It talks about that we're baptized into his death, and that it says that we are buried with him. Here, over and over, it talks about our death. And yet, we are alive, and we are to be alive. And we are to live our lives in service of the Lord Jesus Christ. Buried with Christ, yet alive. Paul tells us throughout the book of Romans, as we begin to study the book of Romans, Paul tells us that we're doomed, that we're sinners, that we, that we were born sinners, that we lived uh, at, in, in sin, that, that, that our life is, uh, is a disgrace to God. He, we, are, we are sinners, and yet he keeps talking about the fact that, that we, we are saved and that we're to live our life uh, as saved people, not as sinners. Paul talks about that there's only one way to, uh, to, to change. There's only one way for a person to become a new creature, and that is through our faith in Jesus Christ. We're born sinners. We live in a, in a sinful life uh, that that all of us have uh, realized that we are we we are failures uh, in trying to live our life for the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet and then we find out that the reason we can't live it is because we don't know Christ that he's not our Lord, he's not our Savior. And so Paul says that we have to, we have to come to, we have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to accept him. We have to repent of this sinful life and we have to turn from our wicked ways to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him. There's only one way that you can change. There's only one way that, that you can take that sinful life and turn it uh, toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, that is the, uh, the only way is through your faith, your faith in Jesus Christ. You can't have faith in yourself. Uh, you, can, you can try to turn over new leaf after new leaf. You can give this sin up. You can try to change. Uh, many people do. Many people go to church. They try to change their lives, but there's always this thing that is drawing them away. Always this thing that they never measure up. There's always this thing that 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 all of a sudden they they find that they think the things that they shouldn't think. They say things they shouldn't say. They desire things they shouldn't desire. And those things draw them away from from where they want to be. They realize that something's wrong. And, and what it is, is they, they've changed, but they've never allowed the Lord Jesus Christ to change them. That, that Christ never became part of their life. That, 
that Christ never, never was their Lord, their Savior. And so Paul is trying to get across to, to the readers here that, that we are sinners without Christ. But with Christ, with Christ, our life changes. And, and so Paul tells us that we're dead to sin. He uses that, that term in verse 2, God forbid, he says. He's saying God forbid because in verse 1, the sinner came up with this idea. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I've heard people use that excuse before. Well, you know, I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven anyway. So I'm going, yeah, I, I sin. Yeah, I do wrong. Yeah, I, I commit this sin. Yeah, I commit that sin. But you know, I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven. Well, that's what Paul is saying. That, that, that he's saying the same thing in verse 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Sure, grace. I can continue in sin and grace is going to forgive me again. I'll continue in sin and grace will forgive me again. That's what he's saying. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I'll sin, but you know, I'm saved anyway. And what is Paul's answer to that in verse 2? God forbid. That's not the way you should live. How shall we? That's what he asked the question in verse 2. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If you are dead to sin, then how is it that you continue to live in sin? There must be something wrong, Paul is saying. How can you have died to sin and yet continue to live in sin? There must be something wrong. Perhaps you're not understanding salvation. Maybe you're not understanding what Christ truly does to someone who really gets saved. I want to talk about buried with Christ yet alive. Buried with Christ. That, that you and I are going to be buried. We're going to die to Christ. Yet we're still alive. We're, we, something's got to die in us, and yet we've got to live. What is it that's got to die in you, and yet you're going to live? <laughs> that's You see, when it dies in you, when that, when that old nature dies in you, you're a new creature. You become a brand new creature. I want to talk about that. Be buried with Christ and yet alive. Uh, in, in verses 1 and 2, I'll go back to this one. In verse 1, he says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Are you going to continue to tell me that you can live in sin? And yet you say, well, you know, I, uh, God's going to forgive me. I'm saved. God. Paul says something must be wrong. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? Here's the question. How is it that you're dead to sin? And he says, and you live any longer therein. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I want us to understand something right here. And here's Here's my first thought that I want to just share with you. We must live understanding that we're dead. We must live understanding that we're dead. We've got to get, we've got to understand this, this fact. We've got to understand that if you died, if you truly died, that old nature truly died, then you, you truly are alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. That you are alive, but you've got to understand that you've got to die first. That you, you've got to understand that there's something in you that must die before you can say, I'm alive, that I belong to Christ. 
that I there's a there's a different creature in me. I'm I'm as Paul used the term, you've been born again. Well, how can you be born again if that old nature still lives in you? That na that old nature must die. You have to understand it, that we're going to live, and yet we've got to die. There's something in you that has to be done away with. There's something in you that has to die. That old person that, that was born serving the world, that old person that had that desire for sin, that old person that wanted to live that life of, of sin, that you can't have it both ways. It, that old nature must die before you can live. And, and, and if you want to live, that old nature must die. Paul says in verse 6, Notice what he said in verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That it, now, let me explain this so that we understand. He's not saying that that people out there won't sin if they get saved. We know better than that. Paul himself admitted that he struggled with sin. But it says that you would not serve sin. That's the key right there. To serve sin means that there's a desire to do it. When we, when we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, that desire to live in the flesh is taken away through the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't desire to do it. We may do it. It's that old hit your thumb with the hammer thing. That's all of a sudden you think something, you say something, you stump your toe something, and then all of a sudden that old self gets angry, gets mad. Most of us have probably been there at some point in time when we realize, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. But it's not a desire to do it. It's that old nature that sometimes just flares. Some of us did not get saved early in our life. I wish I had. I would have given anything in the world if I, if I had gotten saved as a child and my parents had raised me in church, but they didn't. They didn't. Uh, the first Bible I ever got was when I got saved at the age of 38. That was the first Bible I'd ever seen and read and looked at. It was, I still got it. But, but we didn't go to church. Oh, I, I did occasionally when I was an acolyte. And I had to go serve in the church and carry the candle and, and, and wore the little robes and my mama and daddies would go at Christmas or Easter and, and there's little Larry coming down the aisle and things like that. But you know what? When, when it was over and we took everything off, it was beach time from that point on. And Sundays was nothing more than, than picnic time, beach time, trip time. But, it was not a church time at all. Wish it had been because perhaps I would not have had the life that I had before I got saved. You see, there's a problem with having a life before you got saved. I mean a filthy life before you got saved. There's a problem to that. It's because the devil knows all that stuff and he rears it up in your thoughts over and over and over. There's things that I wish I never had seen. There's things that I wish I had never said. That I, things that I wish I had never done. That sin rears its head. But the thing that I can truly tell you is that I don't desire to serve that ever again. It's not that I want to go through that. It's just that I, those old thoughts come back every doesn't take long. Paul is saying this. He's saying, you know what? 
That old that 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 old sin might raise its head sometimes, but it's nothing that you desire to do. It's nothing that you that you want to do. That's what he's talking about in verse six. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Listen, that old life died in me and it died in you. I hope that that old life is gone in, in, in your life and that, that it died on the cross with Jesus Christ. But if you still have that desire to serve it, then Paul is saying something else, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Something's wrong if we desire to serve sin. Nothing's wrong with us. It can, it, it's a heart thing. We need, to, we need to get that heart right with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that a person is not saved if they have those desires. And Paul even admitted that he had some desires that he had to deal with. But the thing of it is, we can't allow it to live in us. We have to, we have to deal with it. So we, we must live understanding that, that we die. What you used to be has got to be dead. What you used to be has to die. And it has to die so that you can live. That you can live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me, let me share something else with you. In verse 3 and 4, Paul is again uh, 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 telling us something about living for the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in verse 3 and 4, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Here's something else I want to share with you. We must live understanding how we die. If you want to live for the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to understand how you died. The old you, the old person, that sinful person. How did that person die in your life? Was it because you just joined the church? Did that person die because you gave this or you did that? Or that you're, you're a good person now or you're not doing these bad things? How did that old person die? die in you. Paul says he did. That old man was crucified, he says. If that old man was crucified, that is, the old you died so that you could live for the Lord Jesus Christ, then how did he die? And Jesus tells us right here in verse 3. In verse 3 he says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. That's how you died. You were baptized into Jesus. Now that word baptism right there, baptized into Jesus, is not water baptism. Look it up. Look up the Greek right there in the words that are used. It still means the same thing. It means to be immersed in. But it's not dealing with water. You were baptized into Jesus Christ. He is saying you were, when you accepted and you believed and you accepted Jesus Christ, you were placed into the body of Christ. You were baptized into Jesus, not into the water. The water baptism is a picture of what this is. Amen. You were baptized into Jesus Christ. That's how your old man died. The old person that you used to be died when you were placed into Jesus Christ because Christ is not going to take sin into his life. Christ is not going to take a sinner into his life. You've got to repent of that sin. You are baptized into Jesus. You are placed into the body of Christ, not physically, but spiritually you 
were placed into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was nailed on that cross of Calvary, you were not hanging up there. You did not go through that, but you were in the body of Christ. When they nailed him to the cross, you were in that body. Think of this. Through the miracle of God, through the amazing miracle of the knowledge of God, he sat there and looked 2,000 years into the future and he saw you getting saved. And he took you and he placed you into the body of Christ 2,000 years ago. And when they nailed him to the cross, there you were inside him. Along with everybody else, the millions perhaps that have gotten saved, maybe thousands upon thousands that have gotten saved, however many I don't know, but they were placed into the body of Christ as he hung up there on that cross. They were immersed in him. You were baptized into Jesus. Notice what it said. As you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you were baptized into his death. As he died, you were up there. You died with him. You didn't feel the pain and the suffering. God just spiritually took you and placed you in there. And you died with him. What's an amazing thing to think that, that you died. Therefore, in verse 4, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. You were buried with him. That literally means you went into the tomb with him. You were in his body when he was crucified. God looked all the way into the future and saw when you got saved and when you got saved, some he looked and he saw them 20 years ago. A people sitting in our church 30 years ago. How long have you been saved? 40 years. He saw that, and he placed you into the body of Christ. Ten years later, he saw somebody else in here get saved. Ten years later, he saw somebody else, and he took them and he placed them into the body of Christ. Every person placed into the body of Christ. And then it says, not only were we crucified with him, but it says we were buried with him. That baptism, when when the preacher took you down under the water, that was a picture, that was a picture of what you did. You died with him. You were in that tomb. He placed you into that tomb. You were in there with him. He put you into the body of Christ. He put you into that tomb. Now remember, we're all speaking spiritually here. You were physically not there. You're physically sitting right here. But spiritually, you were there. You died with him. You were buried with him. And then I want you to see the last part of verse 4. It says in the last part of verse 4, I want you to see what it says. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That means that just as Christ resurrected from the tomb, you too are going to walk in newness of life. You too. You're also are going to resurrect one day. It says that we will we will resurrect from the tomb. We must live understanding that we rose from the dead. We must live to understand that we rose from the dead. There's three things I want you to see that we need to understand. The first one was we must live understanding that we died. You had to die. 
or you can't be saved. That old creature has to be crucified with Christ. We must live understanding how we die. You were placed into the body of Christ. Now we must live understanding that we rose from the dead. When are we going to rise from the dead? Well, you see, we're going to do exactly what Christ did. It's going to go full circle. We died with him. We were placed in the tomb with him. But he's, did, he's going to do something special for us. We're not going to spiritually come out of that tomb. You and I are going to physically come out of the tomb. One day that trumpet is going to sound. And the Bible says, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then them which remain are going to meet him in the air. You see, we're going to physically rise from the dead just like Christ did. He came out of the tomb, we're going to come out of the tomb. Every one of us. Remember what it says in 2 Corinthians, uh, what is it? Chapter 15, I think, 2 Corinthians 15. And, and it talks about when we come out of the tomb that we're going to be, we're going to have that glorified body. We went into the tomb. We went into the tomb corruptible. We're going to come out of the tomb incorruptible. You might go, you're going to go in sickly. You're going to come out perfect. You're going to go in with wrinkles and flaws and all kind of, problems and you're going to come out absolutely perfect. What you're going to look like, I have no idea. What I'm going to look like, I have no idea, but I can, I'm can, i pretty much assured that none of us are going to look like what we look like today. But we will all know one another because we're all going to be resurrected from the tomb. How is all that going to happen? Because we had to die with Christ. We were placed into the body of Christ. We were placed into the tomb of Christ. And we're going to rise from the grave as Christ rose from the grave. That's why Paul says, how can you live in sin and think that, that God, God did all this for you? Paul said, God forbid. You can't continue to live in sin. That's not the life that Christ died so that you could live. We must live for Christ. And I pray, I pray that we all will. I pray that if anybody's here today that's uncertain of that eternal life, I pray that you'll come to see me today. And I'd like to talk to you how you can absolutely know that, that Christ is your Savior. Let's have us a word of prayer. Brother Steve, I'm going to ask you if